Good morning, Nigerians. I'm Dr. Kemi Lawrence from Kemi Talks Media. Let's talk about what's going on with me and Kemi Talks Media. It's the same story all the time, everybody. When you're running a media house or a media platform, you have to have money. As you know, I've been always asking for donations for the last five years to even 10 years when I was in Nigeria. The reason you need money is because when you're an independent journalist, and nobody wants to hire you because what you're saying is the truth. And Nigerian media houses give me the excuse that they can't hire me because they could be censored by the NBC with fines. You need to know how media works in Nigeria. This is why people like Sahara Reporters is in New York. People's Gazette is in New York. Samuel Ogundepe fled over there. Cable NG, Premium Times, they're all in places that they can report freely. Even though Premium Times has an office in Abuja, they've been raided several times by the DSS. The media should never be censored. Kemi Talks Media is a small operation. I wanna make it a big operation so I can oversee people working for me. I wanna build a media house outside Nigeria, preferably somewhere in Africa, in Greenwich time, which means Ghana, Togo, Cameroon, a Republic of Benin. Sadly, the jobs will go to the people that live over there. I will not accept money from politicians and businessmen I've been offered because many of them also have a little thing attached to it. You're going to have to report stories that will benefit our political party and will benefit our company to make us look good. I don't want strings attached to my journalism. Journalism has no favors. Some people praise me because they like what they hear. That's what everybody does in Nigeria. And they abuse me and curse me out and even threaten me when they don't like what they hear. And I know those people. They're usually the same people. What I do is free and fair news balanced but free and fair and balance is out of the way now as you heard christina amampour say the year i was arrested the freedom of speech clause still remains important for all journalists across the world but now we defend media freedom we don't have to be free and fair anymore defending media freedom means the journalist goes into the story and brings out the truth this morning, I'm hearing news from Ghana that the Electoral Commission of Ghana, they have a presidential election next week. I'm hearing that the Electoral Commission of Ghana has limited coalition centers as well as voting centers to 12 media houses. So not more than 12 media houses can watch the election. Imagine. The Ghanaians are on Twitter, they're trending. I'm reading it because I travel to Ghana a lot. And the Ghanaians are pissed off saying that EC, Ghana, doesn't have a right to tell how many media houses are gonna be there because it's a way of cheating. The MPP party is the ruling party and the NDC is the opposition, at least the main opposition. So now they're claiming their ruling party is the one giving the laws under the EC Ghana. This is the same thing happening in Nigeria. When you guys say that the police is working for the APC government or the army is working for the APC government, have we not seen it with Jonathan's government when you see Jonathan's army? Jonathan's army went out and killed all kinds of kids, small, small boys, 12, 13 year old in Maiduguri, claiming they're Boko Haram trainees. And then, of course, there's the 2016 massacre of Biafrans in the Onisha rally. And the survivors were arrested, taken to Potako prison, still there till today. You need a journalist that can file cases of the ICC and challenge the Nigerian government to all these atrocities. You need a journalist that can expose atrocities and it doesn't cost a thing to donate. When I came back to journalism after eight months, remember February 9th, 2024 was my 30th anniversary. You didn't celebrate me, you didn't do any parties, you didn't do anything for me, but it's okay. And nobody knows where I am, but I'm just saying, 
I could have come home. Maybe somebody would have celebrated me, but it's okay. So what I did was I still came back in May, March, April, May. I came back from March to May because of Mubad's case. Some things were reported in the media as autopsy and toxicology tests. So I wanted to update my case, the Mobad case. Look at what I did in the Mobad case, $10,200. All of my monetization money was put to that. Four intern reporters who went to the inquest every day, 25,000 Naira Ubers from Sangutero to Ikorudu every day. That inquest had one day, they had three in a row, and then adjourned, adjourned. It costs money. I have people that work for me in Nigeria, and it is very hard to sustain them. That's just transportation. We have not even added filing the stories. We've not added editing videos. Every time I come online and I make a video, editing it, Posting it on several social medias, I need people to do that for me. I can't create jobs if I don't have money. At the end of the day, it's very hard. So this is my answer to those that gave me my DM this morning and said, oh my God, it's 8, 9 a.m. in Nigeria, Dr. Kemi hasn't posted. That's not how a media house is supposed to run or a newsroom. On that note, I'm asking to raise $200,000. I need $200,000 to start a media platform and a media house with a digital studio outside Nigeria. That's the startup, $200,000. That's not the amount if you're opening it in America or Canada, it's way more. How can I raise $200,000? Please don't change that money to Naira. I don't want to change the scenario because it's not the same worth. Depends on where you're going to put that platform. $20,000 is very tiny to open a media house, but it will open a good one with staff and even a van that can take people around because some of that staff will be in Nigeria. Do you know some of the people reported for Sahara reporters in New York are actually in Nigeria? You know, on the ground, at news conferences, at hearings and things. I'm not really sure, right? You know how Yeli started Sahara? It got a lot of funding. And, of course, the Tinumbu rumor, when he posted the um, Dasuki story, people said Tinumbu and Buari gave him money to do that. And now they wanted to arrest him because he posted their atrocities at the Central Bank of Nigeria when they told MFLA to hide the money. And MFLA was like, oh, how do we hide this money? You remember that stuff? If you don't know what's going on in Nigeria, you need to. Look at what's happening with the Biafrans. Look at what's happening with the Benue people. Look at the Air Force bombing places and saying it's an accident. Even if I'm not in Nigeria, I want to oversee what I'm doing. But I want to tell you something. It only costs 250 Naira today or more. If everybody donated 250 Naira today, guess what? 250 Naira times 694,000 people on Facebook is what? 173 million Naira. On Twitter, 368,000 times 250 Naira, that's 93 million. 81,000 TikTokers on my new TikTok account, 30 days old times 30 days old, yeah, 81,000 people. Which tells you I'm a popular journalist, right? 81,000 times 250 is what? 20 million. And then YouTube, I have 68,000 fans. I've not added that. But if you add all that together and it comes up to like, what? 300 and something million. Considering that some people are on all the platforms, around 300 million, change right back to dollars. We're getting somewhere. Make your donation today. 2007-477-948. 2007-477-948. First Bank. 